Welcome to Growth Hack by Poppy Digital. Tips and tricks to master the algorithms from industry insiders. Now here's your host, Julian Espinoza. Welcome back to Growth Hack, where we break down marketing channels like Google, Facebook, Instagram, and show them how to make them work for you. We all want people to listen to our podcast. We work so hard on them and dedicate a ton of time to getting them right. The reality is most people only tune in for a few minutes. So what's the deal? Is our content not good enough? Why do people listen to Joe Rogan's podcast for two hours? Well, on today's episode of Growth Hack, we bring on Martha Little to teach us how to make a podcast that people actually want to listen to all the way through. Martha is the Senior Director for Audible. She has won multiple Peabody's, Gracie's, and Edward Murrow Awards for her excellence in audio production and storytelling. She has developed her audio skills over a 25-year career as an executive producer at major public radio networks, NPR, APM, PRI, and news director at WBUR. For the past five years at Audible, Martha has overseen a team of top-level producers who are creating shows with talent ranging from Martin Sheen to Deepak Chopra to Elizabeth Banks. Welcome, Martha. Hey, Julian. Good to see you again. Yeah, absolute pleasure meeting you at Podcast Move It. I'm so excited we get to have you here today. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. So we're going to get right into it. This show is dedicated to growth hacking, and this show is dedicated to the production of really good podcasts as well, because we have a lot of podcast listeners. And I think there's a sort of a state of affairs as, as it's happening right now. There's a lot of creators coming to podcasting. A lot of shows are being created. I mean, a lot of brands are, are creating. And we're seeing this like a lot of people interviewing really high level guests. And I, I think we're just seeing like a lot of shows in like so many different directions. And I just want to get a little bit of your opinion and then like some suggestions around creating a show and, and making a show better. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think you're absolutely right. I think m the majority of podcasts are not that great. I would say probably 5% fall into some things that are listenable. And I think for things that aren't, um, a lot of people forget that understanding what their central question is of the podcast, it, whether it's the podcast, the show itself, or the episode, or the guest, it sounds easier than it is. Usually people start with about 20 or 30 questions and you've got to force yourself to boil it down. What is the show about? What, what question are you trying to answer? And what's the episode about? And if you can get into that discipline, you probably will save yourself a lot of heartache and pain. You know, it, it's really interesting to think about because there's a lot of similar shows out there that interview you know, the world's elite. You've got Masters of Scale by Reid Hoffman. He interviews a lot of... Uh, very notable CEOs and high level seat executives, C level executives of major companies. You've got Tim Ferriss who interviews some high level guests from athletes to uh, uh, figures in the business world, uh, maybe even people from our government. Then we have Michael Gervais, uh, Finding Mastery, who interviews a lot of sports athletes. And I think what's really interesting when I listen to every single one of those shows, they each have their own version of what their central question is. Michael Gervais from Finding Mastery specifically wants to extract the core thing that makes an athlete the top top that they can be what is the, what is the thing that makes them the bit the best of being the best uh and it's very interesting um do you have any questions like maybe like a mental rubric or like what how do you classify like what is the central question what what's a good exercise we can do for that yeah that's a great a great question um i mean i think it's it's understanding what's What's going to hook the audience, you know? And so if it's a question of like, you know, how does grass grow? That's probably not going to be a compelling question. But if it's a question of like, when will grass disappear from the planet and cause us all to starve, you know, eventually like that, that has consequence. And so you want to think about what question has consequence for the listener 
don't think about you. Don't think about the person in the story so much, but the person listening to it, why are they going to listen to it? It's also known as the why do I care question. Um, and if you can't convince your friend next door um, or even make a compelling argument for yourself, you've got a problem. You've got to recast that question. I don't know if that helps you. Absolutely, it does. That that that's a, that's absolutely incredible. It's a good way to look at it from from that perspective. Um, I think another thing that's happening is, let's say you've addressed your central question, you've got got this thing. We're noticing that a lot of podcasts, um, uh, podcast listeners, they're not listening more than five eight minutes on average for, to some of these shows. Obviously, let's not talk about the outliers because the outlier is is a thing. Joe Rogan, we know people listen to his things for two hours, but that's an outlier. But on, on, a, on a normal scale, most people aren't listening. What do you think is going on with that? And what do you think is happening that's causing people not to listen to, uh, a, you know, maybe a 30 or 20 minute episode? Yeah. And I, again, I think it's the discipline of being a producer. You know, as a producer, you're the proxy for the listener. You've got to stand in and pretend you're that person coming in for the first time, never heard this before. And if if you aren't kept, if your attention isn't kept uh, tight by this, then you're going to lose lose the people listening. So one sort of rule that's rolled around audio circles for a long time is to have a reveal every minute and a half. And reveal doesn't mean like, oh, you're going to solve a mystery, you know, but it, it's some new thought that you're going to compel the listener to think about. And that keeps them engaged. You know, it's also in movie language, we call it the hope and the fear. What is what is the central character hoping and fearing? And what, what are we, the audience, hoping and fearing for that central character? Are they going to die? Are they going to kill the enemy? Are they going to, you know, win that big bucket of gold? That keeps you focused and anything developing toward that reveal, a re reveal of the answer will keep you keep you hooked. I'm going to ask you a question and and feel free to, to answer this uh, very loosely. How many people do you think stumble onto that versus actually have to craft that? If you had to give us a guess a percentage. I would say, yeah, probably 98%. <laughs> You know, I mean, there there are people who do storytelling for a living and probably understand that, right? But if you're new to this, it takes a long time to figure it out. And I should say that even on the central question point that I make, I deal with veteran reporters and producers all the time. They still don't get it. They still don't. They hand me a draft and they still haven't figured it out. And so I go through this almost with every single person I produce, veteran or non-veteran. Uh, it's pretty pretty remarkable these lessons. Even the masters who've been doing this for a while, there still needs to be oversight. And, and I think the beautiful thing about podcasting is there's not a lot of restriction uh, and a lot of not barriers in order to get into the industry. But yet what's netting out is that a lot of shows don't see the light of day or get very, very few listens. So it is interesting to really think about from this perspective of like, what is a producer? So like, maybe just answer that for a second. Like, you know, I have a producer on our show. Um, I probably, you know, I, I'm a producer on my own show. Um, and I, I really try and attempt to craft a really beautiful episode that's short to the point with these revelations. Talk to us about if, if someone does, can't afford a producer, what, what should they be doing for their show as a producer? Yeah. Um, I mean, they're always, you You know, I assume you have friends and family and if you can't pay a producer, friends and family, if you can trust them to be honest with you and you tell them to be honest with you, they should give you an honest opinion about this is dragging on too long. Most, most new producers start out, they don't, they don't understand the beauty of short is sweet. And they, you really have to work and push yourself to make it as tight as possible. Am I giving the same amount of uh, input or information or entertainment in a 20 minute segment versus a two minute segment? And it'd be, it's amazing how much you can cram into two minutes. Um, and so if you have, if you trust the people you're listening to get, you know, ask for feedback, then you'll begin to understand, ah, uh, this is, this is fat. You know, I need to cut this fat out. I can't, this is just going to bore the listener. I'm going to lose audience. That should always be in the 
front of mind um, and, and tell your uh, people listening to it, that's what I want from you. I want you to know when you tune out. And as an editor and as a producer, that's what I do. I'm, I'm trained. I train myself to figure out like, oh, yeah, I tuned out there. So something's wrong. Something's wrong with the script or something's wrong with the, the audio. And we talk about it. We go back and we write it, rewrite it to fix it or, or re, re-record it, d- depending on what it is. You know, they say if you're going to be uh, if you're going to do a speech, you should say it in the mirror. I mean, this is the, that version of that, right, is, is listening to your own recording and like, hey, where did you tune out? Where did you fall asleep? Where wasn't what wasn't so interesting? Um, for those of you that have listened to the show for a while, um, you probably already know this. I recorded a full season of this podcast uh, before the season that you that you were currently in right now, and I threw it in the trash. Um, I shared it with people. I was getting some mixed signals, but then I went back and I really listened to it, and I said, you know what? I wouldn't listen to my own episodes, and I'm like, let me let me let me start from scratch, and I started from scratch, and I think to your point, I it was about. It was about that central question. Also, I didn't know this at, I didn't understand this as a whole, but a revelation every minute and a half. I didn't have that rubric and I didn't have that little piece of information. But as we've known with this show and as you've seen with my show, we ask one question and we move on to the next one. We move on to the next one and we move on to the next one. So it's definitely been a process. And as a recommendation to everyone, you know, Finding <laughs> Gary V, as much as Gary Vaynerchuk has some funny and great advice and all this kind of advice, he actually, there's something that stuck with me for, for years. He said, the best people in your life are the people who are brutally honest with you. And they're usually referred to people who are kind of like a dick or an asshole or, or, or people who are like kind of mean about things. And those are the people that are the best relationships in your life. And I'm luckily, I have about three of those people in my life. Um, So if you know who those people are, share your podcast episode. Would they listen to it? And and is it keeping your own attention throughout these episodes? Uh, Martha, before we go, you, um, you just produced a really awesome show. Can you talk just a little bit about that show? Sure. It's been out for a while. It's called Chasing Ghislaine. Uh, it's on audible.com, uh, but uh, it is a long investigation by Vicki Ward, who's a veteran journalist um, who looked at the relationship between Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein. Um, and we really get down and dirty with it. And it's it's pretty fascinating. It covers areas, spies, you know, international espionage and uh, in, you know, embezzling funds and beyond the scandal that we know so well about Jeffrey Epstein. It's a good listen. I recommend it. Give a, give us a little, I, that was an awesome promo. Give us a little tease from, from it. Let, let's, I want people to go listen to this thing. Um, well, that's, oof, that's tough to do. Well, I would say probably one of the best things is Vicki tells her own story and she was, as she was reporting 20 years ago on Jeffrey, she was one of the first reporters to do a profile um, she, as she stumbled on the first sexual, uh, you know, molestation by the couple of a woman, she was going to go to press in Vanity Fair with this. But then Jeffrey started to threaten not only herself, her person, but her bosses, the owners of the magazine, et cetera, et cetera. So it was quite a harrowing tale. Plus, Vicky was pregnant with twins and racing against a deadline of having her babies before this, as well as trying to publish the article. So it was, it was a pretty harrowing tale she went through. And you get, you get to hear transcripts of him um, taped. She spoke to him every day for six months. And it's transcripts you've never heard before. And it's pretty, it's pretty interesting to get inside his head. That's incredible. So where would someone go listen to this? So it's on audible.com and you can do a 30, 30 day free trial. And, uh, and you know, we, it's free with sub- subscriptions for books. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Martha. We really appreciate uh, you being here. I'm sure at some point we'll have you back. Great. Julian, it's a pleasure.